If you've clicked on this video, I'm assuming you want to convert your SQL based databases into more interactive based databases. There are multiple companies that have started giving a solution where you can ask questions to your SQL or your relational databases in natural language. In this video, I'll show you how you can implement the same solution free of cost using Google's Gemini Pro models. So without wasting any further time, let me now show you the magic of Google's Gemini model. Before I start with the actual coding section, I want to show you some pointers. The first thing is you require an API key in order to access Google's Gemini Pro models. So this is something that I've already included in the secret section of Google Collab. I'm using Google Collab for the entire execution. So if you're planning to use this locally in your machine, then you don't require a secret. You can kind of create a JSON file and then use that. The other piece that I want to specify is I'll be using a simple database called as fashion underscore DB dot SQL light. So this is a database that I'll be using in the entire execution. So it's a simple database which has 1000 rows and around seven, eight columns. So I'll show you some bits and pieces of the database as well, but this is what I roughly have. Now I'll quickly start with the coding section. So I basically require Google generative AI and I've specified the version number as well, which is 0.3.1. Gemini models are supported only versions beyond this. So if you happen to see this video in 2024, 2025 or later on, you will be able to access Gemini models. But currently as of December 2023, if you're using a Google generative AI version, which is below 0.3.1, then there are chances that you might not be able to access the Gemini models. So I'll run this cell to start the installation. The installations are done. What I require right now is a set of imports. I require GenAI from Google.GenerativeAI. I require the path function from the Pathlib library and I require SQL Lite 3. So these are the three things that I require. So I'll quickly run the cell. Just so that we are on the right page, I'll check the GenAI version as well. We are on 0.3.1. That is, it has support for the Gemini models. So which is the exact thing that we required. Now I'll kind of configure the Gen AI with my API key. So I'll call the configure function from the Gen AI module and I'll pass in the API key. Given that I'm using Google Collab, I have my secret key in the secret section, which is what I'm referencing here. So I'll quickly run this cell. Now that the secret key is up and running, let's go forward. When you start using Google AI Studio, there are a couple of default values for the generation configuration and safety settings. I have not modified either of them. I have taken the default values that appear. Basically, these are the default values of generation config and these are the default values for safety settings. So I have taken them as it is and I'll quickly run them to include them into memory as well. Now, the next thing that I'll do is I'll create an instance of the model. So I'll call the generative model function from the Gen AI library. I'll pass in the model name, which is Gemini Pro. I'll pass in the generation config as well as safety settings. And basically I've defined variables for them, which is what I'll directly pass. Once the generative model instance is created, I'll save it into a variable called as model. So let's quickly run this cell as well. So what I want to create now is a system wherein whatever query is generated by Google's Gemini model, all of that is kind of passed through an interface, which kind of executes the entire generated query on a MySQL database and returns the response. Again, just for context, I already have the database uploaded in the session here. And what I have here is a function called as read underscore SQL underscore query, wherein I pass in the SQL command and I also pass in the database name in form of an input here. In this piece of code, I connect to the database. I define a cursor. The cursor executes the SQL query and whatever results are generated, all of them are kind of fetched and saved into a variable called as rows. I iterate over rows and I print out the rows and finally I close the connection as well. So this is a simple function that does a lot of things for me. I'll quickly run this to import this in memory. Now I'll quickly show you the first 10 rows of my database using this particular SQL command, which is select star from fashion underscore products, limit 10 
So I only want to see the top 10 rows. And here is where I pass in the database name. So I have a table called as fashion underscore products and the database name is fashion underscore DB. So I'll quickly run this. So I have the user ID here. I have the product ID here. What is the type of the product? What is a brand? What is the category? What is the price in US dollars? What is the rating? What is the color? What is the size of the product? So these are the top 10 rows of this particular database. Now I'll try to create a system wherein I ask questions to this particular database in natural language. Isn't this amazing? The biggest part of the entire solution is defining a very robust prompt. So here is my prompt. You are an expert in converting English questions to SQL code. The SQL database has the name fashion underscore products and has the following columns. User ID, product ID, product name, brand, category, price, color and size. Now what I do is I also define some few short examples. For example, example 1. How many entries of Adidas are present? The SQL command will be something like this. Select count star from fashion underscore products where brand is equal to adidas. Similarly, example 2 is how many Excel products of Nike are there that have a rating of more than 4. Select count star from fashion products where brand equal to Nike and size equal to Excel and rating is greater than 4. Similarly, I've provided the other examples as well. So what I've done here is I've given a role to the large language model that it is an expert in converting English questions to SQL queries. The second thing that I've done is I've also given the schema information about the database to the large language model. The third piece that I've also given is I've given it a few short examples. So this is how I've carefully crafted the prompt. Now next up I define a question that is tell me the ID of the most expensive t-shirt. This is like a simple example that I have. So let's try this if I'm able to generate the SQL query or not. What I now do is I join the question along with the prompt, the default prompt which is prompt underscore parts underscore one and I create a new variable called as prompt underscore parts which has the initial prompt as well as the question. And I call the generate underscore content function and I pass this particular prompt. Let's see the response that we get once I kind of ask this question to the large language model which is tell me the ID of the most expensive t-shirt. So let's see the response. So here is the SQL that is generated or here is the SQL command that is generated. Select product ID from fashion where product name equal to t-shirt and price is equal to so and so. so what I'll do is I'll quickly copy this and I'll run it on the database. So my first input, if you remember, is the SQL query itself and the second input is basically the database name. So I'll quickly run this and it gives me the ID of the most expensive t-shirt. And what we've created now is an entire system wherein you can ask a question in natural language and you will get a response from the database directly for that natural language question. Truly mesmerizing. If you go back and realize what we've been able to create, it's simply amazing. Now what I will do is I'll combine this into a function so that you will see the entire magic at once. So here is the function generate Gemini response. Here is my question. Here is the input prompt. Prompt parts will be input prompt and question. This is the response. Whatever response that I'll get, which will be basically a response containing the SQL query that is generated, that is passed to the read SQL query function with the actual SQL command as well as the database name. And finally, all of that is saved into a variable called as output. I return that output. And let's see if this works in totality or not. So I call the function generate underscore Gemini underscore response. I ask the question how many products of Nike are there. And I pass the prompt underscore parts underscore one, uh, which is basically this particular prompt. So I quickly run this. And here is the output. 
there are total 214 products out of 1000 products which are only of nike can you imagine how the life of a business analyst or life of all the business analysts out there in the organizations would change once this solution is implemented at scale this is the power of google's gemini pro models they are able to understand context really well and they are able to generate whatever we ask for in a very accurate manner this is something that i wanted to show you and this is something that i am pretty sure you would start using as well the link to the code and the link to the notebook is in the description section of the video feel free to use this and make more cutting edge applications well this is all that i wanted to show you i wanted to show you the magic of google's gemini model and how you can start creating enterprise level solutions using the amazing models that i've just shown you if you do like the content that i create on my channel it would be super motivating if you can press the subscribe button and also press the bell icon to be notified for amazing videos on data science and machine learning thank you so very much for watching the video Thank you.